Do you remember what flow used to feel like when you're deep inside a technical problem, thinking your way through it line by line, pixel by pixel? Hours would disappear. You know the feeling when you're in that perfect flow state where you're crafting software with your hands. And then you look up and realize you just spent an entire day shipping what exactly? A form validation, a navigation menu, a single API endpoint, so you spent a full day in the zone and you've only come a few inches closer to shipping your product. So now you've started building with AI and sure, things are getting built faster, way faster, but something's off. You're stuck in this weird loop of prompting and waiting and watching Claude code work. And then you're fixing what it got wrong and prompting again and waiting again. And so you've traded that flow state for this new thing that has no rhythm to it. Just a lot of starts and stops. Well, I'm noticing that there's this new flow that's emerging when I'm building products with AI. I'm finding that this new rhythm of development has a repeating three-step cycle. It keeps my momentum going and it keeps me fully engaged as the architect driving my projects. And so this is how I think we get our flow back as professional builders in the age of building with AI. Let me show you how this cycle works. And if you're new here, I'm Brian Castle and my channel here is about building software products in the age of AI. This is not about hype. I'm looking for real practical stuff that actually ships. And if you wanna stay ahead of these changes happening in our industry, grab my free builder briefing over at buildermethods.com. It's my free five minute read on what's actually working in AI development right now. All right, so let's dive into this new flow, this new cycle, if you will. I think of this first step as like a step zero because it only happens at the start of a new project and that's the planning of a new product as a whole. And so last week I started working on a new product and before I even started up a new code base, my first step was to fire up a project in Claude. Now I'm wearing my product hat here and I think it's more important than ever that we as developers start to embrace our role as a product architect because this is where those of us who have full stack experience have the most leverage in this new era of building with AI. Because remember, AI can't replace taste and judgment and that intuitive sense of what users actually need. And so this phase is about turning a raw concept for a product into a tangible value proposition and the start of a roadmap. We're thinking big picture here. What problem are we solving? Who is it for? What's the experience that we're crafting? What's the value proposition? And so here's a look at the Claude project that I created for Newsletter Lab. That's the name of my new product. And so inside this project are all of the strategic planning conversations that I've been having with Claude starting from before I even began the code base. My first conversation was this one called Problem, Solution, and Pitch. So that's essentially where I started laying all that out. And then I'm asking Claude to help me, you know, craft an elevator pitch, a, a tightened up concise problem statement and solution description. And that just really starts to help me think through the value proposition and the positioning and how I'm going to explain this to potential customers. And I think that also helps me shape the roadmap. Now for most new products that I start, I actually like to get a simple one page marketing site up even before I start building the product. I find that designing the marketing message and the website really helps me get into that flow, if you will, of uh, creating a new product from scratch. And so this was a very early version, but then I quickly just took it straight into Cursor. And this is sort of the final version, at least the version that is live now at newsletterlab.ai. But I did do quite a bit of back and forth prompting with both Cursor's AI agent and Claude code to create this. So once I've hashed out those concepts in Claude, I'm ready to initiate the new code base for the project. And to kick that off, I'm using Agent OS. That's my free open source system for spec-driven development with Cloud Code and other coding agents. So when I did that, I ran the plan product command in Cloud Code that is provided by my Agent OS system. And what that did is it created this Agent OS folder in my project. And then inside the product folder, it documented the mission statement. Um, so it took all of my early con conceptual notes and then it drafted up this entire mission statement with like the pitch, the primary target customers, the user personas, and then the problem and uh, how we describe the solution to that problem. Actually a couple different problems and solutions and then some differentiators for how this product will be uh, different or positioned apart from uh, alternate solutions. Just listing out a couple of the core key features. This is not the roadmap yet, but just giving it like a high level mission statement, if you will. 
It did also create an actual roadmap. It created it with these checkboxes. These are not actual tasks for development. This is just tracking our overall high level progress through the different phases of development. And you can actually see they, they're being checked off now because I'm about halfway into the, uh, the development of this new product right now. We've documented uh, the tech stack for this product. Um, that's pulling from my default tech stacks that, that is uh, defined in Agent OS. So if you wanna see how Agent OS works, I've got a deep dive video on the channel all about that. But the key point is this, I'm turning my rough vision into living documentation that my agents can then refer to when they're building out all the features going forward. So now let me walk you through the repeating part of this flow. This is the first step in like that three-step cycle. So this is the planning of a big feature. And so before we can build anything, I need to hash out all the details for exactly how it's going to work, the data model, the user experience. And this should be a messy process. I have to explore different directions and a few different approaches and maybe do some technical research before I come away with a solid technical plan on how I want this feature to be implemented. So rather than jumping straight into the code base and going through that typical dance of vibe coding something and throwing it out and starting over again and again, I like to take a more methodical approach. So let me show you how two features in Newsletter Lab have come together so far. Now, obviously we're looking at a very rough and raw half finished version of this project. And so far I have the ability to set up you know, newsletters and, and like build out the content and sections for how my newsletter template should work. But the two features that I wanna show you are actually in this content area. This first page is where I can uh, collect all these pieces of content from different sources. I just have a couple random sources in there right now. Um, so I can like monitor podcasts and YouTube channels and blogs and social accounts and stuff. And Newsletter Lab will pull in content and score them and store them in this like content library. Of course, I definitely need to still clean up the, the styling and layout on this. So that's the content library, but then there's the sources. So like these are a couple like just random sources in my development environment that I threw in there. So for example, like the Hacker News front page, uh, it can monitor that as a source. It's an RSS feed, we've got different source types. And then there was a, a lot of development on the back end for the ingestion process uh, for collecting stuff and running it in a background job and evaluating uh, pieces of content and whatnot. So these things are functionally in the app, but I haven't yet actually finished all the UI styling and making it pixel perfect just yet. But to backtrack a little bit, uh, this is the phase of my cycle where I actually started planning uh, those individual features. Here is the conversation with Claude where I started to um, kind of describe how I want the content items library to work. I described some jobs to be done for the users, like what they will need to get out of this view. And, you know, I described how they'll need to filter by some criteria. They'll need to uh, see some scoring information and what they'll actually need to see on, on each individual content item. And so then Claude helped me think through how the interface should be structured and what kind of information we should be showing it and how we should be laying that information out. These kind of details really take a lot of thought and kind of going back and forth. And so I took some of this information in this conversation. I also put it into a plain text document, which I edited further before bringing it into my code base. I'm gonna show you the other feature, which was the sources feature design. That's the sources where I can register some websites and things that the app will monitor and ingest content from. So, you know, we went back and forth. I created a, an, an artifact to uh, sort of think through the technical details and some like database changes and a little bit of how the interface and user experience should work. This is all still pretty high level, even though we're getting into some technical details. Uh, it's not perfect yet, but basically I end up like taking all this and then bringing it into the code base and that's when I run the create spec command, which again is a command that comes built into Agent OS. And what that will do is uh, it'll take some details that I provide to it, which I have already kind of hashed out over here and copy that into this. And I pass that into the create spec process that's built into Agent OS. And what that does inside the Agent OS folder in the specs folder, each new feature, it'll create a new specs folder. So. For example, here is the one that it created for that content items management. Uh, it started by writing this spec document, which is sort of an overview. It's got user stories, 
Um, it's got, you know, uh, some details, some like scope for what's included in this feature, what will not be included, what's out of scope, the expected deliverable. Again, a little bit high level there. Then it sort of breaks it down into some technical specs inside the sub specs folder here. So we've got um, some like technical details on exactly how I want this to be implemented. It took these details from the detail that I provided it in the initial uh, prompt, which I worked out with Claude code beforehand here. So, you know, worked out some technical decision making and, and what our actual approach will be, passed them into uh, Claude code and agent OS, and then it sort of nicely laid it out into this technical spec. It also created this API spec. I reviewed that in detail to make sure it's all aligned with exactly how I want to architect and create this feature. This is all before we even begun coding anything. And then the next step from Agent OS is for it to turn all of that into an actual list of tasks. You know, steps one through five, each of them has subtasks, and this is all ready to go. So the takeaway in this step of my flow is that I'm able to leverage AI as my thinking partner, not just my code generator. So Claude helps me refine my ideas and then Agent OS turns them into actionable specs, but I'm still the architect making every technical decision that matters. Step two in this flow is to let our agent cook. It's time to put our coding agent to work on implementing this feature step-by-step step according to the spec that we've laid out. So for this, I'll use the execute tasks command in Agent OS, which ensures that it follows my spec to a T. It also makes use of Claude Code's sub agents feature, and those sub agents are built into Agent OS, and they add a ton of efficiency when it comes to managing your context window. I have another video on the channel that dives deeper into context engineering with Claude Code. Now, I find that developers are split on this, but lately I prefer to put Claude Code into YOLO mode using the dangerously skip permissions flag. That enables Claude Code to work and not stop every few minutes and ask for my permission to do things. And so I like it that way because while Claude code is building, I want to shift my focus onto the next step in the flow. You see, it's this moment where I'm starting to feel that rhythm come into play. So my coding agent is building and testing a new feature over here. And now I'm turning my energy over to ideating and refining the next feature. And so that's how this cycle repeats. And you can start to see the time efficiency here where you're building and planning simultaneously. Now, let's be real for a moment. You might see some vibe coding tutorials out there showing complete apps being built in one shot. That's fantasy. Even if you have your coding agents following a meticulous spec-driven development approach, as I do, there's always some cleanup to do. So yes, after my coding agent is done, I still go in and fix a few bugs. I'll tweak styling. I'll still refine the UX. The difference is I'm never starting from scratch anymore. So the core feature is built correctly according to my spec. So the data model works, the business logic is solid, the tests pass. I'm just polishing the edges. For quick fixes, I'll stay in the same Claude code conversation since it has all the context already. And if I'm coming back the next day, I can always use the Claude code resume command to pull up yesterday's conversation and keep going on it. And for more collaborative tweaking, especially when it comes to UI refinements, I like to hop over to Cursor's AI chat for that kind of stuff. And this week I'm putting the new GPT-5 model through its paces for this kind of work. And I've been very impressed so far. The point is this isn't about perfection in one shot on the first try. It's about getting 90% of the way there automatically and then using our expertise to nail that final 10%. And that's still a massive win compared to building everything from zero. Now, here are three reasons why this flow and this rhythm are so powerful. It's energy efficient for us as builders. So we're able to make progress really quickly by delegating to our AI coding agents, but that reserves our high value creative energy for the parts where it matters most. Second, it prevents perfectionism. You can't obsess over every detail when you're working in these cycles. Ship the spec, delegate the build, review the output, make some tweaks, but keep moving. That's how we keep our shipping speed up. Third, it scales our expertise and our taste. So our architectural decisions can get implemented across a far greater surface area in our code base than we can possibly write ourselves in the same amount of time. Now, I love keyboard shortcuts just as much as the next developer, but this is about leveraging our expertise, not about our typing speed. So the future isn't about AI replacing us as developers. It's about finding this rhythm and this flow where our creativity, our taste and experience 
is coupled with the capability of AI, and that can be used as a multiplier. And if there's one takeaway I want you to get from this, it's to pay attention to your own flow. Notice when you're feeling friction and notice when the hours just seem to fly by because you're in the zone. So make adjustments, experiment. Your rhythm probably looks different from mine. That's the point. No rigid formulas here. It's about rediscovering what works for us and how we can grow as professionals in this new era of building with AI. Now, if you wanna go deeper on the technical side of my workflow, check out my video on spec-driven development with Agent OS. That's where I break down the design patterns that I used and how I make building your way automatic. So right after you hit subscribe on the channel, I'll see you there. Let's keep building.